b b b b base house before I get started today, I just wanted to let you guys know that only 118% of you guys actually watch my videos, so if we could bump those numbers up, that'd be great. Anyways, apparently it's been like 9 months since I've done a video about Base House, and you guys liked it a lot last time, so I figured I'd make another video about it that's just a little bit more in-depth. In my last video, I talked about how Base House is pretty much just dubstep at 128 beats per minute, with a 4 on the floor kick pattern. But like most genres, every artist has a different style, and these can get characterized into even more subcategories. I've noticed in a lot of Base House songs, there's usually one of two types of drops, a column response type drop, and a drop that just plays the same bass patch throughout the entire drop. In today's video, I'll be doing more of a call and response type tutorial, but you can check out my previous video if you want to learn the other method. On top of that, I also have really big news. I know a ton of you have been waiting for this, so I finally released volume 3 of my acapellas and vocal chops sample pack. This pack has so many royalty free stems in it that if you were to play them all back to back, it would take over an hour and 15 minutes just to even listen to all the samples in this pack. And for a limited time only, if you use the discount code NEW20, you'll get 20% off the pack. These acapellas were made precisely to suit as many tempos and keys as possible to take your track to the next level. So don't wait, click the link in the description and check it out. I know you guys will love it. So without further ado, let's get into it. First, start by setting the project to about 126 BPM. 128 also works too. Next, like I mentioned earlier, add an acapella like the ones from my acapella and vocal chops volume 3 sample pack. I'm an enemy of the people. They're trying to take me down, feeling evil. No stop, I can shoot as in lethal. Running from the back, can you feel it for the sequel? Next, add a distorted re -space. To make a re-space like this, start by adding a detuned saw with 7 voices. Next, add a second oscillator on a higher octave with 8 voices. Then add a low pass filter to both oscillators with a little bit of drive. Then add some tube distortion at around 60%. For post processing, add a little bit of a bump to the sub range. And an OTT with a low depth rate and the high multi band turned down. And with a couple pitch bends, that's pretty much it. Add one of the atmospheric loops from my pack. A one shot. Add a siren playing the fifth note of your first bass note. For this intro, I'm going more towards the cinematic style, so make sure to add some movie horns. Same thing goes for the drums. For the melodic aspect of the intro, try adding some eastern instrumental loops that incorporate a lot of half steps in the melody. For those who don't know, a half step is simply one note up or down in any scale. I added a big snare loop with some quarter note marching snares. Add a riser that starts with a lot of tension. To make something like this, take a regular super saw and play two notes one half step apart. Now play this riser with some other white noise sweeps and risers. Background effects to keep things interesting. Take some of the one shots from your drop and tease them in the build up. Take your first drop bass and play it on loop while slowly fading it in with a low pass filter. Let's hear what a finished intro and build up sounds like so far. Personally, I like to start my drops with some drums, so I added this stompy bass kick. Then I added a soft pre-shift clap, as well as a gritty top clap. Here's what those sound like together. For the first beat bass stab, I wanted to make something unique, so I started with a high-end one shot, a brass stab, and finally a low-pass bass shot. Here's what that sounds like together. Add a background ride. 
To bring up the energy of the drop, I added this crash to the background. Make sure to use impacts and sweeps as well. And offbeat snares for rhythm. For the B part, or response, of the drop, make sure to add a lot of drums and percussive elements to set it apart from the first part, or call. And for the second half of the drop, don't forget your cymbals. For the first bass patch, I started with a chant layer. Next, I bounced a serum patch and heavily processed a bass sample with some volume automation. I repeated this process, but this time used a neuro bass instead. Here's some distorted white noise for high end. As well as some background sirens for pitch. To add more groove, I brought in this distorted bit crush bass. Following the same theory, I used some percussive elements on a half beat pattern. Here's what the first bass patch sounds like all together. For the second bass patch, I made this dubstep wobble bass with lots of heavy sidechain volume automation. I did the same thing on a separate layer that I also bounced from Serum. I also duplicated that layer and pitched it down an octave and gave it some more thickness. And I took a cashmere atmospheric loop and applied that same volume automation which gave the section a sense of urgency. Some percussive elements to give the rhythm distinction. And some tonal elements as well. Here's what that whole bass patch sounds like together. And finally, for some extra touches, I have the stereo white and distorted bass saw playing throughout the drop in the background. And last but certainly not least, don't forget the Deep Boy. Now with everything together, let's hear this finished bass house banger. Hey bro, what's up? Did you uh, did you maybe uh, hit that subscribe button and uh, you know maybe the notification bell as well? Oh, oh, you're doing that right now? <laughs> no way, man! You're also buying my packs for my website? Oh, dang, bro, that's crazy. You're real homie. Keep it up, man. Take care.